Hello and welcome to another episode of Learn with Jabe. I'm Jabe Jabelson, and this week we are going to learn how to build a Discord chatbot with GPT-3 Python and Replit. That's right, a step-by-step -step tutorial for how to create a Discord chatbot powered by OpenAI's GPT-3. Now, if you're looking for a fun weekend project, then you've come to the right place. This tutorial mixes and matches a handful of buzz items. We got Python, GPT-3, Discord, Replit. That's right, you're going to leave this tutorial with a working Discord chatbot full of personality and spunk. Now, before we get started, make sure you smash that subscribe button. I got a ton of fun videos, especially related to GPT-3 and chat GPT coming out over the next couple weeks. But without further ado, bon appetit. Okay, first thing we need to do is create our Discord bot. So if you have a Discord account down in the bottom left here, you'll see uh, we need to add a server. So click on add a server. We're going to create a server, create my own. This is just for me and my friends. We'll call it JBGPT tutorial. And voila, we have our uh, server set up. Next, we're going to want to go to discord.com backslash developers backslash applications, which is the Discord developer portal. We are going to create a new application. Jabe Von Jabelson will be our chatbot's name. Agree to the terms and service and sign away all of your rights to Discord. And you can give it an image, an icon, make it a little bit more fun. We'll go with one of my PFPs from Clanosaurs. All right, so next step is over on this left panel, click on the bot. And here we are going to add a bot. Yes, do it, double confirm, and you'll see a wild bot has appeared. Now, I missed my ID token the first time around, so what I'm gonna do is reset the token, and now go ahead and copy this token, and in your working directory, we're gonna go ahead and create a .m file, which is where we will store our Discord API key and our OpenAI API key. So let's go ahead and create a Discord token, set it equal to, and paste the token we just got from Discord. Okay, back over in our developer portal. Let's go ahead and authorize our bot by enabling these three, toggling them on. Let's save the changes. And next we'll go over to this OAuth, and we need to give it the bot scope. So we'll go ahead under scopes in this OAuth URL generator, go ahead and click bot. And in this bot permissions, uh, we wanna give it read messages, view channels, and then for the most parts, we're gonna give it all of the text permissions minus the TTS messages because I am not exactly sure what a TTS message is. Now in this OAuth2, after you have given it the bot scope and the bot permissions, it's gonna generate a URL. Go ahead and copy this and paste it into Google Chrome. We are going to add it to the server and authorize this bot. So here we have the server, click continue. And these are all the permissions we just gave it. And we are gonna click authorize, confirm you are not a human. Beep, boop, boop, boop and you should get this screen that says it's now authorized. If we return to our Discord server, you should also see here that Jabe Von Jabelson is here. Okay, now that we have the Discord bot, it is time to give the bot life, and we are gonna use Python to do this. So head back over to your, to your local environment, and what we're gonna to wanna to do is make sure you install Discord, OpenAI, and load.emb. Discord is what we're gonna to use to interact with the Discord API. OpenAI is what we'll use to interact with the OpenAI API. And load.m is how we're gonna handle our local environment variables um, for this while we're testing everything locally. Okay, to start, we're just going to connect to Discord and make sure um, everything we granted through that authorization is working correctly. 
So we'll go ahead and get our Discord token using our uh, load.m, the git environment variables, which we saved over in our .m file. And then we're gonna initialize everything for Discord, pass in our token and start the bot. So let's save this. And in our local environment, let's try running Python bot.py. And we see here, looks like we logged in successfully as Jabe Von Jabelson. Great, so we have the basic connection working. Next, we are gonna add in this block that's gonna help us test sending a message and receiving something back from the bot. So if we write in our server, hello, Mr. Botface, we should receive the structured response back, howdy stranger. So let's go ahead and save this. You need to rerun your script locally. We'll run this again. And let's go over to Discord and let's write, hello, Mr. Botface. And we get our response back, howdy stranger. So that's how we're gonna send and receive messages to and from the bot. But this was just a structured response. What we wanna do is give our bot a personality. And to do that, we're gonna use OpenAI GPT-3. All right, the next thing we need is our secret key from OpenAI. So if you have an account, uh, you need to add a billing option as well. There's a couple pennies uh, or even less than a penny for each API call we make. And you're gonna go ahead and create a new secret key, copy that, and we're gonna save that in our env file where we're storing all of our local environment variables. So back in our env file, let's go ahead and create a new open AI key and save our secret key there. Now back in our bot.py file, we now need to import open AI. We are going to get our secret key, our open AI key, the same way we got our discord token. And we need to set up the OpenAI API client by calling this API key method. Um, that's basically authorizing uh, that our secret key is, is there and working. And now going down, again, instead of this structured response, we're going to replace it with a response from OpenAI's GPT. So like before, the on message event is triggered when we send a message into the Discord server. We'll check to make sure the message isn't from ourselves so we don't get lost in an infinite loop. And then we're gonna use the OpenAI API to generate a response to this message. Here we're using this completion create method that takes in the engine, which we'll use as text da Vinci. The prompt is gonna be the message content. So this is actually going in, uh, taking the message that was sent in the Discord server and the contents of that message, using that as the prompt. The max tokens is just how long we want our response to be and the temperature is really uh, this default. You can set it higher or lower depending on how loose of a cannon you want your bot to be. And then once we have all of that response, it comes back in this big JSON and we're after uh, basically this choices text in the first row um, because that's gonna be the actual text response and we don't need everything else. And then we'll use this message channel send to send that response back in the server. Okay, let's save this. Let's run our bot again. Let's go back over to Discord and ask, what is the meaning of life? Wonderful, we got a response to a pretty open-ended question there. Okay, heading back to our bot.py file, let's make one more change. And we're gonna add a check to only respond if the bot is mentioned in the server, in case you have friends in there and you don't want uh, the bot jumping in on every single message that goes in there. So we'll uh, just check the message mentions. So you basically now have to at your bot. And if you at your bot, we'll go ahead and, and proceed with the same thing we had before. So back over to Discord, you won't respond to this, will you? And we see, give it a second, nothing back from our bot. But if we mention him, We see, yes, I can respond to this. Fantastic. Let's now move this from our local environment to hosting it on Replit. Okay, log into your free Replit account and on uh, your profile, we can go ahead and create a new 
REPL. Am I saying that right? This is actually the first time I've ever spoken it out loud. We're going to use our Python template, and let's just call this our Discord chatbot, and go ahead and create it. We can go ahead and use the main.py file it creates by default, and let's just copy paste in our latest code. Now, because we're using um, our, our REPL, we don't need our local environment variables anymore, uh, accessing those with the load.m. So we can go ahead and delete this, and we're gonna go ahead and delete how we access those. We'll get those in a new way, but everything else can remain the same. So instead, what we'll use are the secrets. Over here, if you click secrets, we have our secrets which can store our system environment variables. So again, our key will be our Discord token, and our value will be the API key. So let's go ahead and add that. And likewise, we need the open AI key, which we'll paste there, and we'll add that secret. So now we have our Discord token and open AI key secrets there. Now, if I move myself out of the way, you'll see we can import these secrets um, by just calling this os.environ. So here, we are going to use this now instead, and uh, we can do that for the Discord token, and we can also do that for the OpenAI key. So, so now we still need those to authorize through OpenAI and Discord. We're just getting them a little bit different way using the Replit secrets. Okay, we're ready to try and hit run. And the beauty of Replit is uh, we just reference the packages and it will automatically import everything. So let's go ahead and see if this works. Here we see it's installing our necessary packages and our console logs. That same thing we were seeing in our local environment. So let's head over to Discord and give it a try. Remember, we need to at mention, how does it feel living on Replit now? And we get a response. Now this is all great, but what if you're out and about, you're trying to brag to your friends, show them that you have this new GPT-3 bot and you fire up Discord on your phone and you send a message, but nothing comes back. And that's because once you exit your browser, um, or it goes to sleep, your connection is going to get interrupted and you won't be able to actually um, call your bot through Replit. So what we need to do is they have this nice handy dandy way to keep the bot alive. And to do this, we create a new file and let's just call it keepalive.py. And I can link to these instructions. All I'm doing is copying their code, copy pasta, and in that keep alive, I will go ahead and paste it. And back over in our main.py file, we need to uh, import in that keep alive function from keep alive, import keep alive. And then right before we start the bot, let's just run that function to keep it alive. Great, we'll save that and let's run this again. Now here we see it's running our Flask app. It says I'm alive. Let's go over to Discord and just double confirm. <laughs> and he says he's not alive, but we know that he is because he's responding. There you have it, a fun little weekend side project where you learned with Jabe. As always, subscribe to my channel if you want to get more fun videos like this. I'm going to try and do a lot more on GPT-3 and chat GPT. All right, that's it. Music's playing. That means I must bid you adieu.